What is your most memorable pilgrimage? My most memorable pilgrimage? Hmm, that's a hard one. Because um, there's, each one has its own special, uh, really, faith moment. Uh, I remember as a young priest uh, being in, in the Holy Land uh, and celebrating Mass at the Holy Sites. That was really very moving. And then also uh, being at uh, the Church of the Basilica of Our Lady Guadalupe in Mexico City and celebrating Mass there too. Very moving. And since then there's been a whole bunch of, of pilgrimages, but uh, those initially start out, you know, as, as really very powerful. So, great question. Thank you, sir. So, with so much conflict in the world today, how do you continue to form intentional disciples in our diocese? Well, part of it is to help to form you, because I think in the end that's really what it's about. Uh, uh, and, um, you know, we're really making a, a strong effort for our, our parishes, our schools, all of our ministries and organizations to to realize that that's really what we need to be doing, forming intentional disciples and have that be really the center of the great commission that Jesus gave us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28. Uh, so St. Patrick's School is one of the ways, uh, but uh, also all the different ministries and all the different uh, parts of the parish and the schools need to be on board to do that. So. We're right at the beginning of being able to make that kind of a shift. So pray for the shift, and also the shift happens within each of us. So very good, thank you. So um, I've noticed that unfortunately, a lot of young people leave the church. Um, why do you think this is? Well, there's, there's really a lot of different reasons uh, why folks drift um, from the church. Um, you know, I, I, a couple of things though, I, I, I guess I'll come at it from this direction. If someone is in love with the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, and they have a relationship with Christ, and they have a relationship with his church, they will never leave. So those young people that have left, something was missing, and that's kind of where we get back to that, one of the earlier questions about them really being disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, and as a disciple of Jesus, they're gonna follow him no matter what. Uh, and, um, and in the good times and the bad, and, and really find his love there. Um, so I think we as a church really do need to be aware that that's happening and really begin to make a shift to, to walk with our young people and also to invite them be more hospitable to young people that, so that they feel comfortable, you know, with us. So, great question, yeah. So, in a digital world, how can young people be intentional disciples, both in person and online? So, in the digital world, actually, it's, you know, um, uh, there's, there's a couple of sites that are really, I think, special, uh, you know, for us. Um, so uh, Bishop Robert Barron has a very good site, uh, and I actually quote it in my uh, uh, Twitter account every day. So that's also one of the ways. So it's Twitter, and it's Kinnaman BP, so it's a commercial. Also Instagram, Kinnaman BP. And then all of the talks that I give, all the homilies I give, all the teachings I do are on our on our web page, especially uh, in Facebook. Uh, so that's another place uh, where it is. Um, and, uh, you know, choosing some good sites to be on in the digital world is, I think, going to be helpful to our young people especially. Um, I don't do Snapchat at this point, but uh, uh, I'm game. <laughs> you know, we do what we can do. To, to be present to our young people. So, yeah, great question. Thank you. Uh, Bishop, uh, how would you deal with today's society? Do you think we've progressed um, towards the ideal society toward, um, with God, or have we not progressed at all? 
Well, if you're talking about the secular society, uh, we have really, in the United States especially, moved away from God. I think you all have all experienced that in one way or another. There's a secularism happening that is uh, not supportive of faith. Uh, and that's why it's important to have a parish life, you know, to be able to go to Mass regularly. Uh, and to have a community of faith, but also to have a school like this, St. Patrick's, to be able to, to, to have a community of faith, to be able to share faith together, because the world is not supporting faith. It's not supporting love of God. It's not supporting what are core values to us and truths to us, really. Uh, so we need to pray for our society that we can make the turn back to God and back to God's ways and back to God's love. Uh, and uh, you can imagine uh, we are 1.3 or 4 billion Catholics around the world. If we started living, really living the gospel and really being disciples of Jesus, we could change the world overnight. It's a wonderful question. Thank you. Who is your favorite saint? Well, I actually have a bunch of them. Uh, obviously, St. Louis is one of mine, the King of France, because uh, that's a um, namesake. Um, St. Andrew is my confirmation name. And of course, St. Peter and St. Paul are very special because of who they were for church. And then we get into St. Teresa of Lisieux, the little way. St. Teresa of Avila in terms of the mystery, entering the mystery of God's love, uh, and uh, St. Catherine of Siena in terms of learning about God and God's presence. Uh, so there's a bunch. What great question. Yes, sir. What advice do you have for teenagers nowadays? So what I'd recommend to, to you is uh, part of what we were talking about today, you know, during uh, the Mass, and that is to, to really, really foster in your life a prayer life, to really foster in your life the Word of God and the different prayer forms of the Word of God that we've shared with you, uh, to let God speak to you, really speak to you, because we have, you know, you, you have more noise in your life than I had in my life when I grew up. I mean, much more noise. Uh, it's partly because of the digital world. Uh, having said that, to have the things that can keep us grounded in God's love and grounded in faith and grounded in hope. Because that's one of the things that the world is selling, hopelessness. And we are people of hope uh, that Jesus has risen from the dead and he's conquered all evil already. And so we don't have to fear, we don't have to fear. So I just encourage you to, to surround yourself with with folks that can support you in faith, hope, and love in Christ, and also to, to, to stay within the digital world that is hopeful, positive, faithful. Can you recall some of the people that have had an influence on your vocation and how they've had an influence on you? Yeah, uh, you know, the, I went through Catholic school all my life, uh, so a lot of the teachers I had in Grown the faith. Of course, my mother taught me how to pray. My father taught me how to be a Christian in business. And uh, then some of the priests that I knew, especially when I was serving Mass as an altar server, uh, were very inviting, you know, for to, to live this kind of life, uh, to live the life that's built on the love of Jesus Christ and the sacraments and to bring people to God. That's one of the reasons I said yes to being a priest all those years ago, was uh, to, to be able to have that kind of presence, that kind of love relationship with people. So, great question, thank you. Yes, so, um, like say a someone who is a good practicing Catholic wants to run for president of the United States, how would kind of the moral and religious um, aspects of it kind of clash with the whole being the head of a political party type of thing. 
what advice would you have for that kind of situation, I guess? Well, you know, as, as the, if they were to become president of the United States, they have what we call the bully pulpit. So that means their voice is heard. Yeah, and, and so they need to be a person that speaks the love of Jesus Christ and also speaks the tradition of our church in terms of our moral life. Uh, and therefore, respect for life needs to be at the heart and center of that. Uh, uh, and so those Catholics that are choosing to do kind of almost like the grocery store approach, they pick and choose what they want. That's really not giving the kind of example that we're called to uh, in uh, our faith and, uh, and as people. So even as president of the United States, they are Roman Catholic Christians and need to live that way. Would that help? Yep, thank you. How would you guide a young person to finding and answering the call to vacations? So, uh, one, to be a person of prayer, especially. Be a person of the Word of God, be a person of the sacraments. Uh, to be within some community, and a community in which that person can also share how God's moving in their life, and especially beginning to, to uh, do what we call discernment. Uh, so, to discern God's will. So, what are the signs of God working in that person's life? And how is that person being called by God into vocation? What, what would be the vocation they're really being called into? So all of you are, have a vocation now, and you're single, but there'll come a point here where you're also going to have an invitation to live the vocation in other ways. So that will be part of your discernment. Uh, and then whether to be in religious life or priesthood, same thing. You'll be in discernment for that, so very good. Yes, sir. Um, Bishop, uh, what quality or qualities do you think is important to becoming a good Catholic? So what qualities to be a good Catholic? Yes, Bishop. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think part of what we discussed already, and that is, you know, to be, to be a person of prayer, be a person of the Word of God, be the person of the sacraments, but to be a person of community, especially. Um, it's hard to be a Catholic alone in your room when you're not praying with anyone else all the time. We are a communal church and we are a communal faith. Jesus brought 12 apostles around him to, to image to us what it means to be in community and, in, and to be able to support one another in faith. Uh, so those would be some of the things Actually, attending St. Patrick's School is also a part of it, commercial-wise. Uh, we may have time for just one more brief question. So. How did your family react when you told them that you wanted to enter the priesthood? You know, we had a long talk about it, but it was because I was very young. I was 14 when I entered the seminary, so I was your age. And, um, you know, they, they were excited about the possibility uh, but they also knew it was going to be quite a journey, and it was. It was a, a good, long journey, and of course, finished high school, got my degree, then I got master's degrees, and then eventually was ordained a deacon and then a priest. And so that was 44 years ago. Hard to believe. Wow. What happened? Zoom. Thank you all. Very good. Let me give you a blessing, and then we'll take a photo together. So. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well done, team. And our, our Juliana will give us instructions on how she wants us.